In this section, I'm going to go over the Outlook screen, including the main tabs and ribbons, the contextual tabs, and then we're going to end on the key tips. Let's begin by reviewing the many components that make up the Outlook screen. So let's go ahead and go to Outlook. I'm going to start in the upper left and work my way down to the bottom right. So if we go to the very top on the left, we've got the Quick Access Toolbar. This allows you to add commands to the main screen for easy access at any point while you're working within the various apps or modules of Outlook. If we move below the Quick Access Toolbar, we have our tabs and ribbons. Commands are organized under various tabs called ribbons, and instead of organizing the options under drop-down menus, they're organized horizontally on ribbons for easier access and viewing. If we move over to the right from the tabs and ribbons, we've got the Help or the Tell Me What To Do area. This is a text field where you enter words or phrases about what you want to do next or to quickly get to features you want to use or to actions you want to perform. You can also use this feature to find what you are looking for or to use the Smart Lookup for further research. This is great for when you forget where to find the command you need. You just type it in and your results will appear. So for example, if you want to create a contact and you're not sure where to go, you click in the Tell Me What To Do field and type Create Contact. As soon as you type in your information, it's going to give you options. The top part is going to give you action plans, how to create a contact, go to contacts, new items. Below that, it's going to give you the ability to get help on Create Contact and also do a smart lookup on Create Contact. Now, because I actually want to create a contact, I'm going to use my action and go to New Contact. Once I click on that, it's going to open up the dialog box to create my new contact. So I can fill in my information and click the Save button to save my contact. If we go above the Tell Me What To Do, we've got the title bar. This is going to tell you what app or module you're in, and it's also going to give you your email account. So for instance, I'm in my inbox, so it's going to list inbox and my email account. If I switch to calendar, the title bar will switch to calendar and my email account. So let's go back to our mail. Going further over to the right, we have the ribbon display options. When we click on it, it gives us our three options, our auto hide ribbon, show tabs, and show tabs and commands. The auto hide ribbon, if we click on that, it's going to do exactly what it says. It's automatically hiding the tabs and ribbons, so we've got more real estate available on our screen. To bring it back, go to the very top and click, and it will bring them back down for you. We click again, and we go to show tabs, does exactly that. It's going to show us the tabs, but it's not going to show us the commands within the tab that we have highlighted. Click again, show tabs and commands. This one's going to show us the tabs and the commands within the tab that we have highlighted. Going further over to the right, we have our minimize, our restore down, and our close. If we come all the way to the bottom, we've got our status bar. This is going to show us current information about the app that we're in. Because we're in our email at this point, it's going to show us the amount of items we have in there, and it's showing us the reminders, too. If we switch to our tasks, it's going to tell me I have a filter applied, and it still shows me my reminders. And I do have a filter applied here. I'm just showing my active tasks right now. We switch to our calendar. It shows us that we have two items on our calendar for today. We'll go back to our email. And if we come over to the right, it's going to tell us all of our folders are up to date and we're connected to Microsoft Exchange. Further over to the right, we've got our views. We're in the normal view right now. We can switch to reading view and then we can also zoom in and out. If we do a right click on our status bar, it's going to give us all the options that are available to us. So if we wanted to turn off any of these, we would just click on them because they're a toggle on and off. Everything checked is on. Clicking on it will turn it off. So if I didn't want to see the number of reminders I had, click on there and it will remove it. At this point, let's take a broad overview of the tabs and ribbons. If we go to the very top, we've got our Home tab. This is our default tab. This is what's going to open every time you come into Outlook. And because email is our default app when we go into Outlook, it's going to take us to the Home tab for email. Just like the other applications within Microsoft Office, the Home tab is going to contain the most used functions and features. 
if we come over to the left and click on file it's going to take us in our backstage so it's the only ribbon that's a little bit different within Microsoft Office instead of taking you into a ribbon and showing you commands it's going to take you to backstage and additionally it doesn't deal with individual components within Outlook it deals with Outlook as a whole this is where you would set up your rules and alerts and this is where you would set up auto replies you would import or export information from here as well to leave backstage and go back into Outlook just click on the circle with the arrow in it and it'll take you back one tab over we've got our send and receive and this is where you would come to force a manual send and receive of messages next tab over is folder this gives you access to various folder commands If we click one more over we've got our view and this is where we could change our views or our windows that are available there are a couple other things that I wanted to show you within the tabs and ribbons themselves and one of them is the more or the show gallery box so for instance if we come to the arrangement group and click on the down arrow here this is the more or show gallery option and what it does when you click on it is it does exactly what it says it shows you more information it gives you a gallery of options that are available to you if we come back over to the home tab the other one I want to show you is the dialog box launcher when you've got a box with a little arrow in it in the lower right corner of your group clicking on it is going to launch a dialog box and it's going to give you more options that are available for it as well when you're looking at the commands within your ribbon you'll notice that they're broken up into sections and each section is grouped so for instance on the home tab you've got your new email and new items under the new group so each group has a name we've got our delete group respond quick steps move groups find and add-ins within the home tab on this ribbon now let's change our focus to the main outlook window itself if we come all the way over to the left here we've got the navigation pane the navigation pane appears in all views by default and the navigation pane can be resized it can be minimized and it can be hidden the contents displayed in the navigation pane will vary depending on what view you're working in such as mail right now or if we switch over to our calendar the navigation pane will switch to our calendar we come back over if you wanted to hide the navigation pane you could come up here where you've got your little arrow and it's going to minimize or hide the navigation pane over on the side to bring it back click on the arrow and click on the push pin and it will bring it back into place down at the very bottom we've got the area where we can switch between our apps or views so if we wanted to go to the calendar this is where we would come to switch to it we want to go to our tasks and so forth we would switch from here now you notice we've got some ellipsis buttons here and that's because it can't show us all the information on the bottom when we click on it it's going to give us the rest of the options that are available so if we wanted to go to our notes we can do that from there our middle column is called the message list and this is where it's going to list our information so for instance I'm in my inbox and it's going to list all my messages within my inbox here if I come over to the right further I've got my reading pane the reading pane gives you a preview of items without actually having to open them I'm in my inbox I've got this message highlighted so it's going to give me the reading pane view of it or a preview of that message so I could read the message from here I could click on any of the hyperlinks within here if there was an attachment I could click on it to open it as well I could also look at follow-up information if it was a meeting request I could do a response from here and so forth without actually having to open up the message in contrast to core tabs which contain various common commands that are relevant regardless of action contextual tabs typically contain one or more commands that are applicable to a selected or highlighted item only for instance the group tools group tab appears when you've selected a group email it gives you the commands to do anything from editing the group to checking the group calendar so as you can see I've highlighted a group email and when I come to the top I've got my group tools and the contextual tab group so let's go ahead and click on the group tab once we do that we're going to see we can create a new conversation we've got our sample group area and sample group is the name of the group itself we can do our membership from here add new members edit our group create a conversation do calendar items files and notebook from here and we could also come over and create a new group from here 
So that's just one example of a contextual tab. Let's go back to our inbox. Another contextual tab that's available is under our Compose tools, and it's the Message tab. If we have a draft email, so let's go to our draft folder, click on a draft email, you'll see we've got our Compose tools and our Message contextual tab. This is going to give us all the options we need to compose our message. We can copy and paste information from here. We can do our basic formatting, add attachments, add our signature, change the importance of it, and add our BCC and add our from field as well. So that's all the information that's available within the contextual tab message from the compose group. And it only becomes available when you're working within the message. We'll go back to our inbox. Another contextual tab that we have available is our search. So if we click within the search area, we get our search tools, search contextual tab. And that's because we came up here and we clicked in the search box. Once you do that, it's going to give you all the options available for creating your search. So we could refine our search from here. We can tell it what we want to look for, Microsoft. We can refine our search. Does it have attachments? Does it have a specific category? Do we want only important messages? If they were sent to certain people, unread messages, and so forth. We get all these options from our Search Contextual tab. Let's go to our calendar and click on Appointment. And this is going to take us into our Appointment Contextual tab. Now this one comes up Appointment Series because this is a recurring appointment I have. So there's the Appointment Contextual tab and an Appointment Series Contextual tab, depending on if it's a recurring or one-time only appointment. And from here we have our options available, the actions. Do we want to forward this to somebody else? Do we want to invite attendees? Do we want to make meeting notes? Um, because it's a recurring one, we can change the recurrence of it. And because it is an appointment, we can tell it, do we want it to be a show as free, change a reminder notice, categorize it, and so forth. If we come down to my noon meeting, that's going to change to a meeting contextual tab because that's actually a meeting. Other people are attending it as well. And again, it's a recurring appointment, so we've got this series added to the contextual tab. If it were just a one-time meeting, it would say me meeting for the contextual tab. And it's going to give you the ability on this contextual tab to do similar things as the appointment contextual tab. You can cancel the meeting from here, forward it, um, add meeting notes, attend or remove attendees. You could track the information for who's attending and not. Show as busy or free, change your reminder notice, the recurrence information, and so forth from here. So these are some of the contextual tabs that become available depending on what you're working on within Outlook. Access keys are shortcut keys that give you access to the ribbon commands without having to use your mouse. Once you press the Alt key, the key tips appear over each command available in the current view. So for instance, if I wanted to do a new email, I would click H, to take me into home and I do N1 and it's going to take me into a new email. If we do Alt again, if I wanted to switch my view, I would click View or V for the View tab. It takes me into that tab and then it gives me all the Alt keys available or key tips available for that ribbon. So if I wanted to go into my change view, I do CV. It gives me the options available. To manage my views, I'd click the M key and it would take me into the Manage All Views dialog box. So from here, I could manage my views. If I click the Alt key again, hit H to go to the Home tab, gives me all the commands available for the Home tab. Now, if I wanted to, I could just use my mouse at this point and click on something, or if I wanted to get out of the key tips, hit the Escape key. The Escape key will back you out one step at a time. So because I had gone into the commands for that ribbon, it's now taken me out to the ribbon commands by hitting the escape key once. So if I hit it again, it takes me all the way out. So again, hit Alt, gives you the key tips available for the tabs. So if I wanted to go to my folder, hit O, takes me into the folder and gives me the key tips available for the commands within that ribbon. So if I wanted to go to copy folder, CF, and it gave me the dialog box to copy the folder. Now I could select which folder I wanted to copy and where I wanted to copy it to. So it comes in really handy if you prefer to use your keyboard instead of taking your hands off to use the mouse all the time. Again, Alt activates the key tips. Escape will cancel out of the key tips. 
Let's do a quick review of this section. What we did is we went over the actual Outlook screen itself, the navigation pane, the message list, the preview window, or the reading pane. We went over the contextual tabs and how they become available. And we also went over the key tips. Hitting the Alt key will activate them. Hitting the Escape key will cancel them out.